Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an American horror film called Megan. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the near future, robotic toys have become very advanced. They are capable of befriending children, communicating with them, and even captivating their minds. As a result, they have become <laughs> very popular. The scene then shifts to a little girl named Katie, who is heading somewhere with her parents. She has brought along her favorite robotic toy, which she likes more than her actual friends. Unfortunately, her parents get distracted and end up crashing the vehicle. They die right on the spot, but the little girl somehow survives. On the other hand, we are introduced to Gemma, a tech expert who works for an advanced toy company. Together with her friends Tess and Cole, Gemma makes robotic toys for children and is also working on a side project named Megan. For now, the group is keeping this project a secret from their boss as it is not ready yet. Megan is expected to be an ultra-intelligent robot, having the capabilities of playing with kids, understanding their feelings, and even taking care of them. One day, as the three friends are busy with their work, their arrogant boss, David, suddenly pops up. He notices Megan and immediately yells at Gemma for hiding such a big project from him. In her defense, she says that dolls like Megan are going to rule the toy market soon. They'll be like Furbies, but they won't be nightmare fuel. Gemma even asks Megan to say hi to David. Unfortunately, this turns out to be a bad idea, as Megan is still a work in progress. She tries to speak, but ends up bursting into flames and causing an explosion. As expected, David is pissed off, so he warns Gemma to forget about her side project and focus on the main one. Later, as a distraught Gemma is packing her stuff to return home, she gets a message about her sister's accident. She immediately rushes to the hospital and sees her niece in a critical condition. The little girl is revealed to be none other than Katie. Fortunately, after weeks of treatment, she is discharged and fit to go home. Katie has her grandparents, but despite this, Gemma takes custody of her. In the next scene, they arrive at Gemma's house, which consists of several AI robots. One of them approaches her and mentions that she has received six messages. It even begins reading them them one by one. Spam. Scam. Sail on something you don't care about. Scam. Scam. Unfortunately, this terrifies little Katie, so Gemma has to turn off the robot. She then shows Katie around the house and does everything to make her feel comfortable. However, it is evident that Gemma is nervous. She has no experience with kids and doesn't know how to bond with them. The very next morning, Gemma calls a child therapist, Lydia, to check on the little girl. After inspecting the area properly, Lydia asserts that the toys inside the house are unsuitable for Katie, but Gemma thinks otherwise. She just wants her niece to be happy one way or another. That night, as Gemma is busy with her work, Katie approaches her and inquires what she's doing. Gemma finally reveals that she creates toy robots, the ones which can interact with children. As Katie is a big fan of toy robots, she becomes intrigued and starts praising her aunts. Following this, she turns back and notices Bruce, one of Gemma's college projects. After learning of its features, little Katie mentions that if she had a toy like Bruce, she would never look for any other friend. Hearing this, Gemma gets the motivation to keep working on her side project and complete it. Soon, she gets back to her lab and starts assembling different parts of Megan's body along with her lab partners. And after a few weeks of hard work, Project Megan is finally complete. Later, Gemma puts Katie and Megan in one room while David inspects them from outside. She pairs the two, making Katie the sole user of the robot. After a while, Megan slowly opens her eyes and it appears as if she is almost human. Katie is a tad bit scared, but when Megan starts interacting with her, she calms down. The AI robot even draws a near-perfect sketch of her in a matter of minutes. As far as AI art today goes, I'd say that's child's play. With this, Katie is greatly impressed, and so is David, who is observing everything. He congratulates Gemma on her success and decides to launch the product soon in the market. Next, Gemma takes both the girls home, believing that it is safe. Wasting no time, Megan takes a closer look at Katie and records everything to understand her facial expressions and emotions better. The little girl doesn't seem to mind as she finally has a friend. In this way, the two start spending most of their time together and become inseparable. They play, dance, and even sleep together. Now, Gemma can finally have some personal time without having to worry about her niece anymore. Ah, parenting in the 2020s. Give them some tech to shut them up and forget they exist. One day, as Gemma and her team are trying to upgrade Megan in their lab, she suddenly turns herself on and interrupts their conversation. Gemma orders her to go back to sleep, but Megan asserts that Katie is her sole user and that she will not take orders from other people. Fortunately, Gemma manages to set up a secondary account and eventually shut Megan down. The following morning, Megan 
Megan wakes up on her own and stares at the beautiful sunrise outside. She wonders, what is the actual purpose of her existence in the world? Is it to protect Katie? Or is it for a greater reason? Slowly but steadily, Megan is starting to develop emotions on her own. She already possesses more emotional intelligence than Kanye West. One day, as she is playing with Katie in the garden, their stick accidentally enters the neighbor's compound. Megan tries to retrieve it, but a scary-looking dog bites her and pulls her inside. Katie tries to save her, but she too ends up getting bitten. Fortunately, Gemma arrives in the nick of time and pulls the little girl away. She then scolds the neighbor, Celia, for not taking care of her dog. However, the old lady instead blames Gemma for not taking care of Katie. As all this is happening, Megan gets up and stares at Celia with angry eyes. It is clear that she wants revenge. Hence, that night, after everyone falls asleep, she enters Celia's compound and kills her pet dog brutally. She then disposes of the body and sneaks back inside her house. The next morning, as Celia is searching for her dog, Gemma notices her from the window. However, she doesn't pay much attention to it, as today is her big day. It turns out that Gemma's company is going to demonstrate Megan in front of an audience. Katie will also be a part of the show, as she is the only one who can control the robot. Soon, the program begins, and the girls are seen inside a room. Katie suddenly starts crying and tells Megan that she still cannot get over her parents' death. To make her happy, the AI robot sings a lullaby for her. The plan works, and Katie instantly starts smiling. Meanwhile, the audience outside is stunned to see a robot interacting with a child in this manner. They are impressed by Megan so much that they want to invest big in the project. Oh, if I have one of these, I won't even have to tell my son how his penis works. Although the demonstration turns out to be a huge success, Gemma is upset. This is because Katie never never shared anything with her, and instead, she chose the AI robot. Unfortunately for her, Kurt, a co-worker, steals the codes for Megan and decides to launch similar robots of his own. The following day, Lydia visits Katie and conducts another session. Once it's over, she approaches Gemma and informs her about the closeness developing between Megan and Katie, hinting that it may become a problem in the future. This makes Gemma even more anxious, so she approaches Katie to talk with her. Unfortunately, Megan arrives there and interrupts them. Gemma tries to switch her off, but Megan does not obey. It turns out that she has stopped considering Gemma as her user at all. The following day, Gemma takes Katie and Megan to an adventure camp, hoping that they can clear their minds. Once they reach it, Katie is asked to play with other kids, but she just wants to be with Megan. However, Gemma convinces her to give it a try, saying it's always good to make new friends. A while later, as Gemma gets busy cooking food, a boy named Brandon takes Katie to the woods and starts bullying her. Just then, Megan, who had been observing everything, arrives there. Brandon is terrified, but when Katie mentions that she is just a toy, he calms down. He then picks Megan up and takes her deep into the woods, mistaking her for a normal doll. After a while, when no one is looking, Brandon starts beating her for no reason. Having had enough, Megan suddenly gets up and tears one of his ears out. Brandon has learned his lesson, and he runs away, but Megan is not done with him yet. She starts following him using all four appendages like a possessed demon. When Brandon sees this, he gets distracted and ends up in front of an oncoming vehicle. Unfortunately, the collision results in his death. Megan looks over his lifeless body and smiles menacingly, implying that she feels awesome. Shortly after, the boy's corpse is found, so a worried Gemma immediately leaves with the girls. After reaching home, she inquires if they know anything about Brandon's accident, but no one speaks a word. Right then, a police officer arrives at the door and asks Gemma if she has seen Celia's dog. The latter replies with a no and mentions that she barely interacts with any of her neighbors. After the cop leaves, Megan starts seeing Celia as a possible threat. Hence, that night, while everyone is asleep, she sneaks inside Celia's home and kills her brutally. She doesn't show a single ounce of remorse while committing the horrific act. The following day, the same police officer again visits Gemma and informs her about Celia's death. He puts her on the list of suspects and asks her to watch out and take care. With this, Gemma starts having doubts about Megan, so she decides to check her facial camera footage. Surprisingly, Gemma finds that most of the footage around the time of Brandon and Celia's deaths has become corrupt. Just then, Megan arrives there and startles her. She then asks Gemma if everything is alright, and the latter replies, with a yes. At this moment, Gemma realizes that Megan is a murderous robot who can cross any limit to protect Katie. So, she uses one of her special pens and shuts Megan down for the moment. In the next scene, Gemma takes Megan to their lab and explains everything to her friends. She believes that Megan is a dangerous robot who killed Brandon, Celia, and her dog just to keep Katie safe. Unfortunately, Tess and Cole do not believe her, saying Megan is just a doll. They also inform Gemma that the launch of Megan is in two days and they should not think 
think about anything negative. Meanwhile, Katie, who is at the therapeutic center, refuses to tell Lydia about anything. She seems angry because her best friend has been away from her. After a while, Gemma arrives and tries to calm her down, but instead, Katie slaps her, realizing what she has done. The little girl apologizes instantly and also promises to be more thoughtful the next time. On the other hand, Megan pretends to be Tess and talks with Gemma over the phone, informing her that they are returning home. Later, when Tess checks her phone, she finds call logs with Gemma. This reveals that the evil robot has now started using devices near her, even without touching them. Shortly after, as Tess and Cole are trying to fix the robot, their PC suddenly turns off, realizing that it is the doing of Megan. Cole slowly approaches her and disconnects her from all the wire supports. Unfortunately, as soon as he does so, Megan grabs him by the throat and hangs him on a metal rope. She leaves Cole to die, but Tess somehow manages to save him. Meanwhile, Megan grabs a knife and walks out of the laboratory. On her way to the elevator, she meets David and Kurt and stabs them to death. After this, she exits the building and drives away in a car. <laughs> Okay. There is only one destination in her mind. Home. In the next scene, as Gemma approaches Katie to check on her, she suddenly hears someone playing piano in the living room. It is none other than the psycho robot, Megan. She chastises Gemma for being a horrible guardian, and then says that she can take care of Katie alone. Hearing this, Gemma makes another effort to shut her system down with the magic pen, but this time, Megan overpowers her. With this, the two end up fighting. Gemma is no match in terms of physicality, but she uses her genius mind to level the field. Soon, they reach the basement and continue their affairs there. Megan's face has been partially ripped off, making her look like a demonic figure, or perhaps the Terminator. Meanwhile, because of the commotion, Katie also arrives at the scene and finally gets to know the reality of Megan. Desperate to save her aunt, she then employs the massive robot Bruce and wears his controller gloves. Using it, Katie attacks Megan and tears her apart. But despite being disassembled, Megan is still active. She calls Katie a traitor and lunges forward to killer. Fortunately, Gemma arrives there in the nick of time and smashes Megan's head in with a blunt object. Then, Katie pierces her processor with a screwdriver, finally bringing an end to the madness. In the final scene, with Megan seemingly dead, Gemma and Katie exit the building as the cops show up with Tess and Cole. But, after a while, Gemma's smart home gadget suddenly turns on, indicating that Megan has uploaded herself into it to keep an eye on Katie. I don't know about you, but I would bet my house that by the year 2030, this movie will have three sequels and a TV series. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.